Elections offer an important forum for Russia and other U.S. adversaries to seek to deepen divisions within American society through disinformation campaigns. The intelligence community projects that both Russia and China will, for the foreseeable future, continue to press their disinformation campaigns, attempting to undermine the U.S. population's confidence in their government and society. Russia certainly did so in the period following the election and preceding the January 6th attack. The disinformation spread by Russia and its messengers during that time was not, however, entirely original. The intelligence community's assessment found that Russia's disinformation engine borrowed President Trump's own words to achieve its goals. Now, this is very important. Whether Donald and Russia are working hand in hand or whether they were just at the right time at the right place, we, the people on the street, know that it's the former and not the latter. We, the people on the street, know that there was that meeting in Helsinki. We know that Donald Trump chose Putin over our intelligence community. We know that Donald Trump, as early as last week, did the same thing by reasserting his position of choosing Putin's words over our intelligence community. It's... It's in plain, open and plain view. You know, it's, it's an insult and a slap in the face of every American who watches helplessly at this happening and realizes what's happening. And it is irresponsible of every other American who chooses not to see this as an imminent threat to our democracy. When our country's constitution was drafted and when our country started this great experiment, we didn't have the luxury of gladiatorial sports every night. We didn't have the luxury of the free market system. We didn't have the power of the dollar. People at the time were invested in knowing what was happening in politics because politics is about the people. It is about the body politic, is it, it is what pertains to the well-being of the people on a day-to-day -day basis. It's tough questions. It's ugly work. And there is a lot of corruption. But that does not mean that every American citizen does not have the duty to partake in it, to watch over our Constitution, just as our Constitution vests to us fundamental rights that gives us the value that we feel in ourselves, that we are worth something, that we have rights, that we are equal, that we can go out and protest, that we have the rights of privacy, no matter how much eroded. We do have power of the due process of law. We have the right to trial. We have these rights. So when we so proudly say we have these rights, we should also in be cognizant of the inherent responsibilities we have to safeguard those rights. And when Americans don't do that, we have what we have in America today, a dysfunctional House of Representatives and millions and millions of people disinformed and influenced by foreign adversaries that seek to deepen the divisions within American society. We are killing ourselves with our apathy. We are killing ourselves with our selfishness. We are destroying our own republic, and they are just helping.